Hey guys, this is Derek from the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast. Just want to let you know about this great partnership that we have with Collar and Elbow now. You can check out all of their great merchandise at collarandelbowbrand.com. Make sure you use the code WIQ101 to get some great savings. Everybody likes saving money. I like saving money. So you should too. Collarandelbowbrand.com, WIQ101. It's a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, wrestling 101, classes in session. Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat, take a seat. Watch them do their thing on the MIC, face to feet. They cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's in killer spree. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the diligent one, Corey Dillinger. This is. D1 since day one, and you're listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, alongside Derek. Yep. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And today we're joined with international manager legend, Sonny Ono. How's it going? Really good, man. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Doing great. Doing fantastic. <laughs> so, Sonny, man, what's the juice? How you, how's life been for you? Well, life is good. I mean, I, I just graduated my youngest um, from uh, uh, Warburg College, and, and uh, which is, uh, I think they're the like, last seven years of the NCAA wrestling champions, nice. um, uh, Division Three. So, yeah, so everything's good. Nice, nice. Yeah, so to piggyback on karate, I mean, you seem like a karate expert, karate champion, kickboxing champion. What goes into preparing for, for those tournaments and stuff like that? You know, whether it's MMA or, um, uh, you know, karate or, or uh, you know, boxing, uh, wrestling, those are all martial arts that I, I think, unlike a lot of other team sports, I think those those in, independent um, individual competition one-on-one prepare you for life a little bit different than, you know, team sports. Um, I, because you can't depend on anybody and you have to prepare, um, you know, yourself. You know, you, 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 you can't, you can't tag off to your partner or you can't pass the ball, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's, it, it, it prepares you in a little different way, those, those, uh, one-on-one competition, like martial arts. Nice. And then, and at one time you were, you were highly ranked in the world, like the best bantamweight in the world. Um, can you tell us, like, like, how did you get started in kickboxing? Well, it, you know, I, I'm originally from Tokyo, so, uh, um, I came here when I was 11 years old. Um, one of the most, you know, I mean, if, if you, if you were from Japan, I studied judo when I was in, in, uh, uh, uh Japan and, and after I got here, so I just continued to, to study martial arts and, and, uh, you know, it's kind of stereotype things, but we, you know, I, I enjoyed martial arts a lot, so I, I continued to study martial arts, and and then, um, you know, I used to compete on a national circuit in the United States between, you know, in seventies and eighties, and and uh, matter of fact, that's that's how, uh, you know, I got involved in professional wrestling with, uh, uh, you know, the guy I used to compete back in those days together was a guy named by Eric Bischoff. So, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's just kind of one thing led to another and, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, so I, I mean, I really enjoy martial arts. Um, uh, it's, it's to, uh, you know, you, you just, you just want to go out and test yourself. You know, how good can you be? How good are you really? So, you know, I mean, it's something I enjoy doing and, and, uh, just like anything good in life, you know, you have, you have to, you have to take a risk. And, and that risk is that, you know, you can get your butt knocked out on your, you know, um, 
but um, I, I enjoy the opportunity of being able to knock somebody else out. So. <laughs> nice, yeah. The one thing I loved about you, man, is that your entrance was always great. You used the camera to take a photo. How did you come up with that idea? Well, you know, this was, you know, I mean, obviously people have done selfies before, but I think, I think what I was doing was that, uh, you know, and, and being, you know, the, 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 the stereotypical of Asian in general and Japanese in particular are, you know, always taking pictures, you know, the, the tours always have a camera on their neck. And, and so, you know, I just, I, it was just a, I wanted to capture the moment, and so I, I would come out and, and uh, every time I made an entrance to uh, whether it was Nitro or, or Saturday Night TV taping or uh, any of the pay-per-views or Thunder, you know, I made sure that that I wanted to capture the moment, and so I would do a selfie. And, and you know, look, I didn't invent selfie, but I think I can safely say that you know um, I was kind of like innovator. I, I made it so that. And I was the only person who was doing it week in and week out on every television show two, three times a week on uh, all, all the, um, you know, WCW shows. So, um, and I, it, it just got caught on because I did it every time and that was part of my entrance. And, and really it came out of necessity of, you know, let's make this character noticeable and, and, you know, uh, uh, let's, let's take a picture or a selfie of every interest of our, our, you know, a celebrating moment. And, and that's basically how we came up with it. Nice. So uh, how did you make the transition from doing kickboxing and getting involved in wrestling? Well, it, it's really simple. Like I, like I told you a few minutes ago, the Eric Bischoff was one of my guys that used to travel the circuit with. Uh-huh. And, you know, we were... At, uh, Eric Mitchell is one of those legitimate, real tough guy, a black belt that I used to run around with, and and uh, you know he, he was waiting for us to uh, you know pay twenty five dollars, travel all over the country, and we would drive, um, you know, turn up on a Saturday, and we would drive from Minnesota to um, um, you know North Carolina, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, you know, or, or go to Florida, and you know we just packed the van with about four or five guys and. And drive down there and be able to pay 25 bucks and, and be able to beat people up and, and get in a fight and, and not get in trouble. You know, we, we didn't end up in jail. And so, um, um, and, and, you know, we're testing our skills and see how far we can take it. And, and so one of the guys I used to run on was, was Eric Bischoff. And, and, uh, once Eric, um, got involved in professional wrestling and, and that, that's another story in itself. You know, I mean, uh, um, I, I created this little game called Ninja Star Wars, and uh, um, I pitched to Eric, and Eric just said, we got to get this thing on TV. So he, uh, we shot a commercial uh, using some of our karate kids, and, and he took it to uh, Fern Ghana with AWF from Minnesota, who had uh, syndicated shows. Um, uh, and so we, could, we, we, made, we did a deal, Eric cut a deal with uh, Vern Ghana, to be able to show a commercial on their television to sell our games. And, and, uh, that's how Eric got into business. And, and they, they took one look at Eric and said, Hey, you're a pretty good salesperson. Good looking guy. How'd you like to come and work for us? And that's how Eric got a job with AWA. And, and, uh, a couple of years later, he called me from Atlanta and said, Hey, I got to take care of this business in Japan. And, and, um, why don't you come with me to Japan? And, and um, I ended up going to Japan with him uh, to uh, take care of some business that the prior management had uh, um, didn't do the job really well. So we had to go and make that thing up. And and, uh, and that's how I got into business. I was a consultant. I was taking care of business for WCW and, and New Japan. Um, then once we started bringing their talent, uh, the New Japan talent, from Muda to Chono to Jushin Tata Liger to Masa Saito and their top star like Tanemoto and, 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 uh, Kensuke Sasaki, Tenzan, all those guys started to come over to you, showing up on WCW television. You know, none of them spoke English. So, so I became, um, uh, by default, I became their, um, 
the character of Sonny Ono, the manager. And, and you know, the rest is kind of history. Nice. Now, as far as, like, you said you used to travel with Eric Bischoff. So, with Eric Bischoff, that wasn't a gimmick. He was actually a real tough guy. He actually really knew, knew karate. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah, Eric, <laughs> Eric, 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 Eric had, you know, he, he probably, I would tell you the one the reason why he was, he didn't win a lot of championship, although he won, you know, he won his share of it. Uh, he had kicked, Eric Bischoff kicked, kickboxed. Uh, matter of fact, you can find him. Um, uh, there's a tape of him fighting on uh, CBS Sports. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so he, yeah, he was he was a kickboxer as well. And he, you know, Eric Bischoff probably got more disqualified for fighting after the bills and stuff like that, stomping <laughs> on people, probably more than more than than, than, than than winning a championship. But yeah, he was he, he wanted his his share, but he probably got disqualified. A lot of events that he could have probably won. Oh man, that's crazy. So, Sonny, that's a legitimate tough guy. That's pretty yeah. cool. Sonny, are you familiar with the indie scenes right now of professional wrestling? Yeah, I mean, you know, I followed, you know, some of the stuff. I, I certainly followed the Japanese guys. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, with like, you know, with with like Nakamura and and uh, you know, a lot of the guys. I still know some people, but a lot of the guys I used to work with, obviously, they're behind the scene now. You know they're not out, 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 they're not out there wrestling anymore like Dean Malenko and 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 you know a lot, a lot of those guys that used to be with the WCW. So uh, you know um, you know I, I follow some some but mostly I follow you know who's, who's out there with the Japanese guys who's out there. Yeah. You know obviously like I said uh, um, you know there's a few guys out there and I think WWE being honestly the only place to really work right now. Um, um, in the United States, you know, th- there isn't too much opportunities for, uh, 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 you know, international talent. But, but, you know, they did a good job with, um, um, guys like Nakamura san and, and, uh, you know, a few other Japanese, you know, wrestlers. Um, so, uh, you know, um, I follow them a little bit. That, that, I don't really follow the storyline too much. Yeah, because, you know, on June 8th, right here in New Jersey at WrestlePro, you know, Ultimo Dragon is going to go up against Joey Janela, uh, you know, and you're going to be in the corner of Ultimo Dragon. Um, are you looking forward to that event? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. And, and um, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting because, uh, you know, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, um, Ultimo Dragon... Is still one of those amazing international stars. I mean, he's really, truly, you know, he just had a Dragon Mania in, in Mexico City, and uh, I think he's right now he's in Cuba. I think he, um, and he, he, he's, you know, the, the man truly is an international superstar. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was just a few week months, about a month ago, we, I, we met at SWF, uh, you know, uh, Mega Slam, and, and what a match, you know, him and Rip Titus had, you know. Do you like doing these smaller shows and conventions like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, one of the advantage I think, you know, advantage and disadvantage. I mean, there's a, such so many great talent out there right now. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go to the WWE event, only problem is everything is so controlled and a lot of the talent. You know, you can't really touch and feel those guys. You know what I mean? But if you go to these lot of independent event. Because there's so many great stars out there that it's on the independent scenes that you can go out there and get autographs, talk to them, shake their hands. You know, I think those are the opportunity that, that it's out there right now. You know, because there's so many independent talent out there and, you know, you get, you get to be right on the ringside and you get to see, you know, um, um, I mean, if you close up, you, you can literally, you know, taste their sweat. You know what I mean? When those guys are really <laughs> going at each other, uh, it's pretty exciting. I think I, I would encourage uh, uh, many uh, wrestling fans to go to those independent shows because you get to see, you know, firsthand, up close and personal, uh, these great talent and, and, and the things they do. But you don't really get the same effect on television or same effect even going to their big shows unless you're going to pay, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar seats, you know, um, 
it's hard to, hard to get that same effect when you're sitting up in a North Bleed section. Yeah. Now, now, speaking of Ultimo Dragon, um, one of the greatest cruiserweights of all time. And every time you think of Ultimo Dragon, you think of Sonny Ono. Uh, can you tell, how did that relationship come about and how did you guys get, you know, partnered together? Well, obviously, because, because, um, I mean, he speaks sp- Spanish fluently and, and, and speaks Japanese. Obviously, he's Japanese. But, um, once again, when you're on American television, you really need a mouthpiece mm-hmm. for, you know, Double talent, for that matter, for, you know, even, even American talent or English speaking talent, you know, some of the guys just can't do interviews and can't get, you know, um, uh, and so that's, they need a manager. And, and especially for foreign talent, you, you almost have to have a talent on American television because it's, you, you can't, you know, you, you know what I mean? You can't get the storyline across, um, and I think, you know, that, that was the reason why I, I you know, I, I partner up with the Ultimo Dragon. We've been friends for, you know, over 25 years. And, and, uh, what WCW expanded into Nitro and, and of course, uh, later on Thunder, we needed talent. You know, we need, we needed expanded talent because you can't keep watching the same 40 guys. So, you know, when, when that happened, we brought in, uh, a lot of talent from New Japan. A lot of the great talent. And I was involved in, you know, in, in getting those guys over here. Um, you know, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Ultimo Dragon, um, you know, and, and Yuji Nagata. Those guys all came basically the same time when we needed, when WCW needed a talent. And, and, uh, you know, and, and we made a deal with New Japan to get all those guys under WCW contract. So, you know, I mean, it, it was a great time for wrestling. And, and that's how I was involved with all those guys. Nice. And, um, like I said, um, you know, even, even, you know, the, even the one of the, probably the best talent out there, international talent, like Nakamura, you know, he's, he hits a plateau because he, he doesn't, you know, he can't communicate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think, I think, and, and that's, that's the, that, you know, that's, that's the issue that uh, you'll have to somehow overcome. Yeah, sure. Now, was there a difference when it came to managing guys like La Parker and Psychosis? Like, was there a barrier when it comes to, like, the, the Spanish and the Japanese? Was there a difference? I mean, because, you know, um, uh, basically, you know, I was, I was a mouthpiece, right? So, um, uh, not really. Now, when I started managing guys like Ernest Miller, it was a whole different deal because Ernest Miller and me, man, me managing him was, it was, I was more of a psychic. You know, obviously, Ernest speaks well enough and he communicates by himself. So, I was like a psychic, like, uh, like you know, like, gimmick like rush hour guys you know what i mean yeah yeah so i was even you know i, I was i, I was, I was a, I, almost a comedic sidekick for him and you know believe it or not ernest used to you know didn't win a lot of matches but you know he would lose you know and i i would be one of the reasons why he wouldn't win the match <laughs> yeah and so you know so we you know so um so you know it, it, it was a little different kind of management Whoa, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so growing up, I, I've always noticed your sunglasses. How many pairs do you have, and, and where do you get them? Well, there was a, there was a company called Arnett, but they still sell sunglasses. There were there uh, one day I was wearing their glasses, and they, the the guy from Arnett came over and said, "Hey, you know, how many sunglasses you want? You wear my sunglasses, you can have many as you want." So, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> um. yeah, so I was, and, you know, and I used to pass those out in the back to a bunch of the guys. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely cool. Now, you, you, you talked about this earlier when uh, Monday Night Raw, uh, I mean, Monday uh, WCW Nitro, they started uh, Thunder. And, you know, they, you said that they, they needed more talent. Like, how do you think WWE is doing nowadays with their brand split of SmackDown and Raw? Do you think they're handling they got, like, a good amount of talent? Or are we just seeing the same guys over and over? Yeah, I mean, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult time for, I think, you know, to keep everything new and fresh. I think one of the things they need to do is to continue using international talent. Um, you know, like, like you take somebody who's, who's amazing in ring work talent like Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's, she's amazing, right? I mean, and, yeah. and, uh, one of the problems that she'll probably have, and, and if you, if you follow a little bit, is just a, uh, no disrespect to, to American talent, but Japanese Jewish wrestling, which means female wrestling, they, they are, you know, stiff as you could be. Yeah. You've seen some of their matches on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you talk about being stiff. I mean, I've seen, you know, those missile kick off the top rope. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've seen, you know, double foot stomp from the top rope. I mean, some of the things they do is you just, you just wince. And if you're wincing when you watch a live event, that's stiff, you know? Um, and I, and not, not that, not that I, I that I'm, I'm saying that that's what's necessary, but, to, to be able to work like that, which is amazing talent. And, um, it's kind of like what back in the days when Medusa, um, uh, was with the WCW. We had to bring in talent from international, international talent like Akira Hokuto, um, you know, Chigusa Nagayo, Bill Nakano, because, uh, Medusa worked and, Japan for a long time for uh, uh, all Japan um, women wrestling champion and so she was used to and accustomed to work that style of match you know they call it strong style now but you know it's just, just much more closer much more stiffer and and it's just just amazing you know amazing entertainer that they are and and I see the same kind of thing happening with Oscar as well, you know, mm-hmm. and, and for Nakamura, um, you know, he, he, he can, you know, he's amazing talent. Obviously he can work your American styles, but you know, he's, he's doing this angle with AJ Styles, which is great because AJ Styles went from New Japan, mm-hmm. you know, so he did, you know, it's a much easier chance, you know, to get those guys to work together and have an amazing match. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing I always liked about you is that you always ran your mouth, and, and sometimes you would get in the ring. Were you were you hesitant sometimes about getting in the ring with you know guys like Perry Saturn or or, or anybody? Yeah, you know, one of the most amazing thing about that I'll tell you about professional wrestler is that you know they, they could love each other or they could hate each other, mm-hmm. but once they get in the ring, they're professional. I never see people really, you know, a few times people have done, you know rogue and, 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 and literally hurt each other. Yeah. But what's the amazing thing is that, you know, you, you literally absolutely have to trust the guy to do the right thing and protect you, you know? And, and, and that, that is always the amazing thing about professional wrestler to me. Um, because if, if a guy wants to kill you, he can kill you. Yeah. I mean, literally, you know, you, you take a Dis Valley driver and if guy wanted to kill you, he can kill you. <laughs> You know, he can really smack your neck. Um, um, and yet, you know, they, they trust each other to do the right thing and, and work. So, um, you know, I am I am amazed by their professionalism, um, you know, despite, you know, whatever anybody says. Now, what I worry about more than anything else is some of these guys that who's not seasoned out there trying to do stuff. And you've seen some of the stuff on YouTube, you know, people trying to, mimic some of the professionals and really hurting themselves, you know? Yeah, definitely. Now, you were around during the time of the Monday Night Wars. Um, just with the, the ratings battle and, you know, all those type of things, uh, did you guys always feel like everybody had to step up and perform, like, at a high level? Well, I, I, think, I think it goes without saying, though. I mean, you know, competition, I think competition is good for um, business. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when Monday Night War was going on, there was more people watching professional wrestling than than, than any other television. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the best time ever in history of professional wrestling. As far as ratings, as far as for fans, because um, everybody was trying.
trying to the competition is good because everybody's trying to one up themselves, right? Yeah. So, and that's including the talent. Talent getting the opportunity to be at the Russell in front of millions and millions of tele- television audience. And if you do a great job and, and people love you, that means that that's a job security, you know. Um, and and not, and 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 because of uh, um, uh, having two company to go to, there was a competition for talent. That means everybody got paid a lot more money, you know. And that's one thing I think Eric Bischoff doesn't get enough credit is that if he wasn't for the um, uh, circumstances that Eric Bischoff had a lot to do with, um, you know, having an opportunity to do the Thunder, uh, having an opportunity to do the Nitro, and having that Monday Night War, um, because of that, what was going on, I think a lot of the talent got paid a lot of money. Um, it was the best of the times. Matter of fact, once the Monday night, once WCW was sold and it became one company, um, I think, I, I, I know for a fact a lot of people got, you know, they get, they get the, uh, so many contract renewal or they got their contract reduced. So, you know, competition is good for everybody. So only for talent, so only for the fan. And 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 that's it's great for business. Definitely, yeah. So when you know when Ultimo Dragon came to WWE, were you contacted to come with him, and, and did you enjoy his run there? Yeah, no, I enjoyed his run. Um, I think it was I, I think it was a little bit short for him. I, I once again, I think he probably needed. Man, I was not contacted to come with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he could have used he could have used like I said earlier. You know, any international talent needs a mouthpiece if you want to survive an American television professional wrestling show. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to be able to communicate whether, whether you're heel or, or a baby face to carry on the storyline. Mm-hmm. You know? And and even if you speak English, if you don't speak it clear enough or like you and I can communicate, the problem becomes this. How frustrating do you get and I get it because English is my second language, but if I get on the phone and I call a a a, uh, a credit card company and some guy in Santa India is talking to me, and I get frustrated because his English is broken, and it's hard for me to understand the broken English because because English is my second language, yeah. um, you know, and and so you, you get that disconnect. So if you don't speak English clear enough, so you can understand. And, and and communicate with your fan base, then you know that that's a big turnoff very quickly. Yeah. So you know, so you know whether whether you, it's necessary. Absolutely, I think you know. Um, I know they don't have a lot of managers and they don't have a lot of valets, but you know that particular skill to be able to communicate for your wrestler. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a, you know, very important thing that, uh, uh, international talent, um, certainly almost, almost necessary. Yeah. You know, so do you have any fun stories that you can share about being maybe on the road or like any fun ribs? Oh, there's, I mean, there's millions of stories, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, stuff that I can talk about. Um, I can tell you that, uh, uh, uh Tonga, or uh, was known as a main in, in, in uh, uh, WCW, mm-hmm. probably is the, is the scariest person in the world. <laughs> uh, at the same time, he's probably the uh, the best you know best guy to have on your side if there was going to be a brawl. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I used to tell people all the time. One time we were in Baltimore, and and. Uh, um, I, I, I believe this individual was uh, related to one of the nasty boys, Brian Knox, I think. And he kind of looks about the same size, Brian, and next thing we look it is that uh, 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 Mr. Tonga has this guy bent over backward over the jukebox oh, with, his, with his fingers in a guy's mouth and thumb on the guy's throat. And and everybody trying to calm him down, and only person who could really calm him down, Macho Man, Macho Man Randy Savage finally came over and goes, hey, 
hey, you gotta, you know, it's okay. Kind of calm him down and he just, I, I thought he was going to eat the guy. <laughs> the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that is it's literally, you know, he, 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 he is descendant, uh, I think his grandfather was the king of Tonga and, you know, and, and I, I believe his grandfather, those, those people were cannibals. Oh my goodness, <laughs> wow. I used, to, I used to say this all the time, I go, why would you ever want to mess with that guy? Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, Oh my, God. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't think twice about, you know, biting your nose off or biting your ear off or, you know. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to remember that one. You know, yeah, definitely. Not only that, they have, they, you know, they have no nerves on their, you know, their sinus cavities from breaking coconut with their head, so they have no sinus. Like, you can spray them with a mason, they'll look at you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh man! Wow, good, see, good to know. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no. no. There's, there's thousands of story like that, you know. I mean, uh, uh, but some of them I can't say. You know, some of them, some of them I'm gonna have to write a book one day and tell all the stories. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of great times. One of the things that I will say this is that is that uh, when, when you when you travel on the road, you know, for uh, uh, 250, 300 days a year, you know. These guys you travel with week in and week out, you know, they become your family. And, 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 um, uh, that's what I miss more than anything else. Um, is, is that, uh, I, and, and that's why I go to these autograph signing and, and, and these things that I go. As a matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, I'll be, I'll be doing that in New York, um, 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 in New Jersey on the 8th and 9th, I think, over there. And, you know, I get to see my old buddies, you know, and, 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 and uh, so, so they, they all, they were for my family for, you know, many years. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's it. You know, I, I don't, I don't miss the travel. Um, um, certainly after 9-11, you know, things really got really bad. So, um, uh, but other than that, you know, life is good. Um, um. I'm probably going to make my way, working my way down south to Dallas. I'm going to be moving down there next two or three years, oh, yeah. getting out of this, uh, 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 you know, um, the weather up here in the north. So, uh, uh, yeah, everybody, you know, my life is, is, is uh, can, can it be better? Nice. That, that definitely sounds great. Now, can you, Sonny, can you tell us, like, where do you see yourself on, like, the list of, like, greatest managers of all time? And who do you think some of the greatest managers of all time were? Well, you know, of course, you, you got you got Bobby Heenan, yeah, who, who, was, who was amazingly helpful to me. Um, you know, when, when I when I had to be the Japanese manager, um, um, Bobby Heenan. Um, you got guys like um, Gene Oakland and, and Jimmy Hart. Those guys were so helpful. Um, you know, and including guys like Masa Saito from, from New Japan. Um, you know, they were just wonderful. I mean, they, they, they took me out of their wing and, and helped me out in every way they can. You know, a um, uh, lot of subtlety of, you know, being a manager. Boy, do I see myself as a manager in, in professional wrestling? Well, you know, as, as a Japanese international manager, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to rate myself where I'm at. But I did get to manage probably, you know, a modern day uh, uh, top international talent. You, you got female wrestler like Akita Hokuto, who is still the, still the WCW Women Champion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, and you got, you know, you got somebody like Bona Kano. Yeah. You know, probably one of the most known uh, WWE and, and uh, uh, WCW. Um, you know, she's, she's one of the great known Japanese talent. Shikusa Nagayo is, uh, 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 probably one of the top female wrestlers, uh, certainly top five female wrestlers in Japan. Um, you know, I got to manage those people and, you know, as far as female goes. And then, then if you go to the man's side, you know, I got Masa Saito, um, Jushin Thunder Liger, you know, Masahiro Chono, um, uh, Great Buddha. Um, uh, Ultimo Dragon, um, uh, you know, Kanemoto, 
Kensky Sasaki, Tenzan, you know, so, I mean, who's who and really, um, uh, Yuji Nagata, um, these are the guys I got to manage, so, you know, I am absolutely blessed because I, I you know, my, my tenure that I was at WCW, I did get to manage the best of the Japanese had to offer probably at, at that time. So, uh, Sonny, you know, at the end of yep. um, the match at SWF, you know, who, who and two Guerrero, the Juice came out and challenged Ultimo Dragon. Can you give a little insight when that match will be and, and what can fans expect from that match? Yeah, I think it was initially scheduled for July, okay. but I think it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be postponed now. I think, um, um, as, as I have a conflicting date, uh, he'll be in Japan, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, but it, it'll be this year, I believe. Um, we're coming back, and you know, um, Hoover too is amazing talent. Um, uh, but you know, you, you know, like I said, and I, I, I mean that, um, uh, it'll be an amazing match when they when they wrestle each other. Uh, I will miss that match. If, if you have an opportunity to go see that match, um, there won't be too many times they'll be tangling, and and. It'll be one for you to, you know, uh, uh, really mark it on calendar whenever that happens, and and certainly call the promoters and tell them to make that, make sure that thing happens, because uh, uh, when those guys tangle, it, it, it is, it is, you know, especially if you can watch it live, it's it's going to be an amazing match. But I still believe, for uh, who is more accomplished, yeah, I mean, you know, Ultimo Dragon is the man who held ten belts, and he's the only person ever to held. WCW and WWE built at the same time. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, don't miss Sonny Ono and Ultimo Dragon at WrestlePro June 8th. It's a Friday night and the next day, June 9th, at Legends of Wrestling Convention in Monroe, New Jersey. You know, he's there taking pictures, signing autographs. Yep. Um, you know, Sonny, thank you so much for taking out the time to talk with us. You know, we really do appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, I appreciate it, and I want the, the fan to come out and, and uh, get a selfie with me, and uh, um, we'll have a good time, you know, I mean, um, maybe we'll, you know, we'll get a few of the guys together, a few, few guys together, we'll, we'll, go, we'll all go out and get some sushi. I hey. need a sushi bar when you come and find me. I like that, that sounds <laughs> good. Sounds good. Nice. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you having me. And for us, we are Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And you can listen to us on the B Plus Player Network on all pl- social media platforms. Uh, so we'll see you guys soon. We're out. You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast, powered by B Plus Player Radio.